Hi, my name is Andrew Newman, and I'm an engineer here at Sun Hydraulics. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to set a CBCA LHN counterbalance valve on a test bay. But first, let's look at the symbol. Sun's CBCA has three ports. We have port one, which is our load holding port. This is where load induced pressure is applied to the valve. If that load induced pressure goes above the valve setting, the valve opens and allows oil to flow from port one to port two. In the case where we want oil to flow from port two to port one, we flow over the valve's free flow check at low pressure and bypass the restrictive parts of the valve. Another way to open the valve is using the pilot assist function on port three. This allows pressure from other parts of the hydraulic system to decrease the setting of the CBCA and open the valve, allowing flow from port one to port two. Sun Hydraulics manufactures and tests their products using advanced technologies for efficiency and accuracy. The following is a simplified version of the counterbalance setup and is used for demonstration purposes only. Let's go over the hydraulic circuit that we're going to use today to set our counterbalance valve. Right here we have our pump inlet. That flows all the way to our CBCA valve that is going to be installed in a T11A cavity. Right here we have port 2 which is going to drain into our tank below. We also have up here what we call a P-tube. It's integral in counting drops for a counterbalance valve and we'll get more into that when we do the testing. We scoot back here, you can see that we have port 3 of the counterbalance valve plumbed to a Sun DBAF switching valve that will divert flow through the pilot section and allow us to open the valve. Alright, now it's time to set our counterbalance valve. The first thing I want to point out is that this counterbalance valve has not been set and we can see that the lock nut is loose. Right now the counterbalance valve is at its minimum setting, which means when I turn on the stand we should see flow coming out of our P-tube and out of port 2 down to tank. I'll turn it on. We're going to increase pressure a little bit. And we can see flow to tank and flow out of our P-tube. Now we are going to increase the setting of the counterbalance valve to its maximum. A counterbalance valve is threaded so that when we turn the adjust screw counterclockwise, we are increasing the setting. Likewise, to decrease the setting, we go clockwise. We continue counterclockwise until we get to our very max setting. We should see zero drops out of the P-tube. Now we're going to increase our test stand pressure to our setting value. In this case, it's going to be 3,000 PSI. Now we are going to slowly adjust the counterbalance valve down to its approximate set point, which means we're going to turn our adjust screw counterclockwise. We know that between three and three quarters and four full turns is the adjustment range of the valve. We're going to need about one turn in order to start seeing some flow out of the P-tube. Once we have flow coming out of our P-tube, now we know we've found our approximate set point. We're going to take our test stand down to zero, and now we are going to verify that the counterbalance valve opens at our setting. Because of hysteresis in the valve, you might need to do this verification step a couple times to make sure that your setting is correct. So I am going to slowly increase test stand pressure up to our setting. The slower you go, the more accurate you are going to be. And again, I'm watching for drops out of the P-tube. All right, we've reached 3,000 PSI, and we don't see any oil yet. That means I need to decrease the setting, decrease the setting of the counterbalance valve. Right away we start seeing flow. So we're going to do our verification step again until we crack at exactly 3000 PSI, increasing our test stand slowly from zero.
Beautiful. I'm going to take my test stand down to zero one more time. And now it's time to set the lock nut. We recommend using a torque wrench. This particular torque wrench is set to 80 inch pounds. When you're torquing down your counterbalance valve, make sure to keep the adjust screw in the exact same position that it was in when we verified our setting or else our crack point could change. Once we've torqued down the adjust screw, we have no need for that anymore and now it's time to verify once again that our crack point is at 3000 PSI. My pump is still on and now I'm going to slowly increase pressure up to our set point. All right, our crack point is at 3000 PSI. I'm gonna increase the pressure a little bit and then we're going to drop our test stand pressure down to 85% of our setting. In our case, that's going to be 2550 PSI. At that point, the valve should shut off. The valve has shut off, and now we're going to verify our pilot stage. I'm going to actuate the sun switching valve. That is going to divert flow to port 3 and open the counterbalance valve. We can see our pressure drop dramatically as the valve is opened. And once I release this, the valve should close back up and that is when we are looking for zero leakage out of our P2. What I'm looking for out of the P-tube is what we state on the Sun website, which is five drops a minute. There are 250 Sun drops in one cubic inch of oil, which means if I'm looking at my P-tube and I count to 10, if I don't see a drop even forming, I know I'm pretty good. Once we verify that we have less than five drops a minute out of the P-tube, we can take our test stand pressure down to zero, shut the stand off, and our counterbalance valve is set. And that was how to set a counterbalance valve on a test bay. Sun recommends that the counterbalance valve setting be 30% higher than your maximum load induced pressure. The valves also reseat at 85% of the factory setting. If you're struggling with back pressure, try a vented or a four ported Sun counterbalance valve. You can visit our website for a lot more product information and a technical tips page to help you out.